Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the What's New in 15.3 webinar. This is a preview of what you can expect to see in the release that goes out over the weekend. Uh, my name is Jonathan Silva. I'm joined here by Brett Goldman. He and I are both from the Customer Success Department. Um, we're here to help you, our customer base, um, learn as much as possible about the product so that you can derive as much value uh, out of it as possible. And so we're going to go ahead and get going. I just want to take care of a few housekeeping items. And the first one I want to take care of is the agenda. So here's what you can expect from this uh, webinar here. We're going to go through a demo of what's new in 15.3. And it's really just two items, one very large item being the release planner, then one smaller update. And then following just a few of the highlights, I'm going to go through an example of how you can use the release planner from start to finish, um, just as a baseline for all of our customers. We understand that each of you have your own approach to organizing your team, so you probably plan your releases a little bit differently. And so we want to give you the baseline so that you can understand how you can best use this tool to incorporate it into your release planning processes. And then following that, we'll have a Q&A session. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, then that will likely not be included in this recording. So you're welcome to post your questions either in the comments section or I actually highly recommend sending your questions into success at axosoft.com. So that being said, we're going to go ahead and switch over to the Axosoft product. So if you at any time don't see my screen, just let me know. And so in order to access the release planner, you should see it enabled by default as a tab um, here towards the top. And this is something, if this UI in general just looks new to you, this is uh, from 15.2 with our super tabs introduction. And so we're gonna click on the release planner and let's just go through a, a few highlights here. So I'm gonna take a look at a sprint that's already been planned. Um, and you'll, you'll first note, of course, that the screen has been split into my workspace here on the left side and here's my release planner on the right. So let's go ahead and click on that sprint I mentioned that we already planned out. And here is really the true value of the sprint of the, of the release planner that you are able to see all of the team members that are participating in your release with their own items um, assigned to their section here. Each of their sections gives you the number of items assigned to them, how many hours or points of work that represents, Oh, I'm sorry, this is just in hours. Um, and then how much availability is left. And so, and any items that are assigned to the sprint or release will be associated to the unassigned section. So this is not necessarily a user, but it's just a, a, a bucket where we place items that are assigned to this release. And then perhaps you're looking to assign those to a different team or a different team member. And so, Essentially how this behaves is that you're able to drag and drop items like I just did from one section to another. So in this case, I just assigned an item from the unassigned section over to the development sec the development team. And so there are a number of items updated, the number of hours they have assigned to them updated as well. If I were to do the same thing to perhaps, let's say Dave, you'll see that Dave's availability will update. So he had previously 35 hours assigned to him. Now he has 47 and his availability remaining availability has updated. And so now he has 47 hours remaining all of this, which will roll up. So Dennis, Dave, the administrator, um, any other team members here will have their, their release capacity, uh, their users capacity roll up to the overall status of the release right here. And so I can see how much has been assigned based off of all my users. So I see there's 207 hours worth of work assigned to each of my individual participants in the sprint or release. I see that seven hours is associated to a team, which makes sense. I see the dev team here has seven hours that there's 15 hours of work that's still been left unassigned, but is part of this release. And so sprint three has these three items, which are sitting in this bucket. And it looks like I've gone over, um, uh, capacity that I set for myself. And so this release capacity is that familiar setting that you've seen before. Um, looks like I planned out 200 hours for sprint three. And so that's what I'm seeing right here. If you don't want to use a defined release capacity, you can definitely just leave that, that field I just showed you blank and you can rely solely on the user's capacity if that's much more useful and relevant for your team. 
And then of course over here on this side, I can go ahead and adjust details. Maybe I need to correct, uh, maybe I mistyped what I put from the start date or the due date. I can go ahead and change that. Um, I can expand and collapse uh, my user so I can quickly see, okay, where is everyone sitting here? And I can scroll through here much, much quicker. And if I need to add any team members here, I can go ahead and start um, clicking through them and adding them appropriately. And then the last and major thing, of course, which I will go through in my example, is that you can drag and drop items from the left to the right to just to place it in the sprint three. I can also assign it directly to a team member. So I'm not going to do that quite yet. I'm going to show you that in my example. Um, but those that's the major highlights of this release planner. One of those things to keep in mind is that we made this with the intent to minimize the amount of time added to a project or release because of improper planning. And so we definitely envision teams using this, you know, at the beginning of the sprint as it's meant to be a planning, a planner. Um, if you're looking to also, we, we would expect teams to also take advantage of our burn down charts, of our dashboards. Um, these things will show you the status of your releases or sprints, um, the way that, you know, you, we have traditionally done so in the Axosoft product. Okay, so the last major thing, the, the, at least for this portion of the webinar, um, the last update that we made for 15.3 is that we renamed the daily scrum to stand up. We just found it more helpful this way um, so that you can go ahead and launch it as normal and use this to get a status report of how things are going as well. And so it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and start from scratch. And so I've selected the release planner and I'm going to this, go, go to this drop down menu and I want to create a new release. So I'm going to click this create new release. I'm going to select sprint. I'm going to type sprint four. Uh, the root release will be that original v1.0 and I'm going to set the start date and due date. So they're the next two weeks. All right, let's go ahead and, and I'm going to leave the capacity auto. So this will allow me to only rely on the user's capacity. If I want to set something here because I know I have to share my team's resources among other projects and perhaps this is where you might find that useful. But for now, I'm just going to leave it auto. Oh, and also specify that this needs to be a sprint. Thank you. Okay, so let's go ahead and select sprint four. You'll see that it is empty. There's nothing in here. Nothing's been assigned to anyone. And we can go ahead and get going here. So I know these items are currently assigned to sprint uh, to version 1.1, but I want to go ahead and select these bugs and um, based off of, um, you know, that the filters that I have here, these are what's up for consideration. And we happen to have some bandwidth this sprint. So I'll go ahead and add these over. And you're gonna see a cool thing happen regardless. Because these items are already assigned to many of my team members here, you'll see that they have their sections already built out. And so Axosoft assumes that, okay, these items have already been assigned. You've already given them an estimate. Let me go ahead and build out this section for you. And so I have Dave, Dennis, Drew, and Frank, and all their defects here listed. And so, and how many items they have for each one, and then their availability. And so one thing that uh, I do want to show you that I um, may have not touched on previously was the user's capacity. Where does it come from? And it's an excellent question. The user's capacity comes from um, editing any given user and going to the capacity section. So what I just did, just to reiterate here, is I went over to Dennis or Drew and I just clicked the edit button. And as the administrator, I have the ability to set their work days. These are per user. Um, set their capacity, so their daily capacity, which is per user. And it assumes the daily capacity is the same for each one of those days. And then I can add vacation days and vacation days are also per user. And so you can add it at a vacation day for um, this particular user. You can hit save and you will see their vacation days appear under this section. And once you save it, you'll see that their um, capacity will update. So previously it was 76. Now it is 68 due to that one day that falls into the sprint that needs to be accounted for. Now, if you're just a general user and you want to set your own vacation days, you do have the ability to do that by going to the 
your username in the upper right corner, navigate to user options, and you'll see the same option here, capacity. Now you won't have necessarily the ability to change workdays or capacity settings depending on your security role. And this security role, by the way, is the same one that uh, it's the same one as before. If you navigate to tools, people, security roles, it's the one under releases under the administration section. Uh, it's the ability to view the, re the release tree. And so that will give you access to the release planner. Uh, but yeah, you can add your own vacation day as an individual uh, user logging into AxoSoft. Now, I want to add a few more users here. So I want to add Angie. I want to add Celeste. Let's go ahead and bring those two in. Um, and then let's go ahead and see if I can bring in a team. Let's go ahead and bring the dev team, just a general one here. And so I'm going to add a few more items to this release. And so I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this these items over to Celeste. And so Celeste is, she will have her section update. So it looks like I went completely over her capacity in this case. Uh, oh, it looks like what I've done is because I had uh, items previously selected. Yeah, it looks like because I had items previously selected, I reassigned everything to Celeste. But this does demonstrate an important key thing here is that if you go over, then it will glow uh, this gold color and so she is seven hours over and so I can use that to go ahead and redistribute some of the work here So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm unselected on the left side uh, Let's go ahead and select a few items here. Let's give these to Angie And so you, you start to see how I can redistribute some of this work now uh, so I can go ahead and you know uh, Drag and drop from between users so between the, the release section I can and I can also monitor my release capacity up here and watch it update and slowly move all the way to the right. And so you may find that you will be done as soon as it reaches full capacity or if you're taking advantage. So let's go ahead and set a capacity here. If you're taking advantage of this capacity, then you have a different threshold that you have to monitor. So you have to make sure that you are. So I have 205 hours left of availability and it looks like, yeah, I still have items that I can assign to Drew, to Dennis, to Frank. So there's lots of work that still has to be doled out. So let me go ahead and just do a little bit more dragging and dropping here. So there you go, these items are assigned now. Unselect, drag and drop. Let me drag and drop these to just the general release. If I do that, it will leave it in the unassigned section. So let's scroll up again. So you see the unassigned section is back. It has a number of items that are associated and how many hours of work are in this unassigned section. This might be handy because perhaps from here, this is where you wish to drag and drop so a few of these items over to a different user. So let's go ahead and drag this over to Drew. And then I'll collapse Drew a little bit more. And then I'll also, these last couple items, I'll, leave a, I'll give a couple more to Frank. All right, and so, this is a great way for you to visualize how things are looking in terms of your upcoming sprint or release. How you know you are done is really up to you. But for most people, you'll probably find that as you get a picture here that looks more or less what you're, you know, you don't want to go over your capacity because you, you'll get feedback as well. Uh, but you want to get as close to the capacity perhaps and make sure that everyone has enough work to go around. And so, that's the major, those are, that's how you can move things from start to finish. Of course, with Sprint 4, um, let's go ahead and jump over here. So I'm going to go over to my All Items tab, which I enjoyed using. Um, it's really business as usual here. So I have Sprint 4 selected. I can go ahead and see how these, these are the items that are up for, um, up for development. And I'm going to group by, here we go, I'm going to group by who it's assigned to. And then it looks like I also want to just make sure that I'm viewing every item type. And so I see all my team members here and all the items that are associated to them. And it looks like I may have a, and then, so for the burn down chart, you only have one day's worth of work. And so it, it starts from here. And so as your team members begin to move items through the workflow, they can go ahead and start logging their work. So let me go ahead and enable some columns here. And I'll also, let's make some more room. And so I enable the columns and they can go ahead and move things through the workflow as usual, log their work logs, which will affect the burn down chart, which also affects the overall um, progress of your sprint. So right now you're looking at sprint, uh, 
sprint three since that's what I have the data built out as. But these are the and that these are the accompanying metrics that you can use uh, to complete the circle, so to speak. So you start out in planning, then you can go ahead and let your users log in as normally and log in their work logs, and then you can start to track their progress. And then of course you can get a daily uh, report of how things are going with the daily standup. And so that's the release planner. That's how you can move things from start to finish. We understand that you may have some questions for us, but hopefully this gives you a baseline of how things could be used for your team. And if you do have questions and you want to, you know, get our feedback or our thoughts on things, go ahead and email those questions to success at axosoft.com. And by all means, if you enjoyed this content, thanks for joining our webinar. Um, there's more webinars like it on our YouTube channel. There's webinars on the customer portal, on notifications, on um, just very, uh, on how to use AxoSoft with the Scrum methodology. So there's lots of excellent content that's already available on our YouTube channel. We definitely would love to see, uh, we always love seeing new subscriptions, new subscribers come to our channel. So we encourage you to subscribe and perhaps invite other team members of yours to join in. Follow us on Twitter. It's the best way to find out when these recordings are posted online or just to get general news of when things are going to be available. Um, so, and this is also a great way if you're an installed customer and you just want to be kept up to date on when we release the 15.3 version for install, um, we can go ahead and give you, uh, you can go ahead and follow us on Twitter to get up to date live um, announcements there. And then of course, here is our email address, success at axosoft.com. Should you have questions about the release planner, any other portion of the product, we are here to assist you. So thanks again for joining us. For those of you on YouTube, thanks for watching all the way through. Um, and we'll hope to see you in the next webinar. Take care.